Hello everyone, it's Shane Kanto, your Wasteland reviewer, and I'm here to review Netflix's Fincher film, Mank. And this is David Fincher's latest effort, written by his father, Jack Fincher, and this tells the story of Herman Mankiewicz, the screenwriter who wrote Citizen Kane, and is centered around the period in time that he was sent off while in bed to go write the script for Citizen Kane, as it uses nonlinear storytelling to do flashbacks to try to set the stage of who this Herman Mankiewicz is and how he got to this point. And boy oh boy is this a Fincher film, and boy oh boy is he a master of cinema, because I feel like if you didn't have his level of craft, this film would not work. This film feels like it's right out of the 1940s. Like, I feel like I'm watching a film from old Hollywood. The How the sound is mixed and edited sounds like an older film. The black and white is gorgeous. The cinematography in this film is off the charts. And Eric uh, Messerschmidt, who does the cinematography, the black and white is so crisp. The lighting is beautiful. You see those rays of sunshine coming in. There's scenes of smoking, you just see the smoky room, and it just looks absolutely beautiful. And then you have Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross doing the score, which is a very different kind of score for them, but it accomplishes what a great Reznor-Ross score does, and that it, it keeps twisting the knife and building the tension whenever it can. There's moments where it feels like it's really channeling vertigo. And you can just feel this underlying tension. You can feel the energy and the craft that Fincher is bringing into a scene. And it all builds and builds and works into it. This film is about an hour and 15, I mean, two hours and 15 minutes or so. And it's balancing flashbacks and current moments and building up to this point. There are some moments that feel like they can drag in terms of the story. And it's definitely towards the later ends of the second act of the film, when it's really leaning into some of those flashbacks into some moments in Mankiewicz's life. But there are certain scenes that are captivating. There's one particular scene shared by Gary Oldman, who plays Herman Mankiewicz, and Charles Dance, who plays William Randolph Hearst. And just the way the camera follows them the way that it presents these two men, especially Dan's, who might not be in this film a lot, but he is a commanding presence whenever he does, and captures that feel of a William Randolph Hearst, larger than life, the real life Charles Foster Kane. And you have Dan's at moments just looming over Mankiewicz, and as they walk down this hall with everything pitch perfect and the framing and everything you just feel like you're watching a master craftsman at work filming this film and there's moments where there is immense tension building there's one particular scene at a circus dinner party and a drunken Mankiewicz comes in and tells the story of a new script idea he has and the way that all the actors in the scene slowly start pouring out from the dining room table because the tension, the discomfort, the awkwardness just keeps building. And how each of these characters reacts to it just says so much about their characters. You can watch this one scene and understand who all these people are. That is impressive filmmaking and writing and acting. There's so many particular scenes that just pop out of the screen at you and just have this energy. This film is about a man and his vices and his process. And you really, Gary Oldman carries this film through as he's giving this believable and just committed performance as Mankiewicz. And the charm, the dialogue in this is so sharp and just bounces off of each of the actors delivering these lines and building this chemistry and this tension throughout the film. There's some scenes where it's just like, feels like it's just crackling and popping out at you. And 
if it weren't for, like, this would be, if it weren't for some of the parts towards the middle where I felt like it did lag and might have been able to trim out a bit of the story, this film would have been definitely right at the top of my top films of the year because Fincher is just amazing talent. Gary Oldman is giving a fantastic leading performance. Amanda Seyfried's never been better as William Randolph Hearst's young companion. And she's believable, she's earnest, she's someone that we can relate to and brings out a different side in Mank. And, like, I mentioned Charles Dance, who's just commanding, and then Tom Burke, who plays Orson Welles, is powerful and fiery and just commanding and charismatic. Everything that made Orson Welles, Orson Welles. You have this film that brings an ensemble together with such an amazing master of the craft in David Fincher, and just this film feels like it could have been one of those amazing, timeless classics out of the old Hollywood and the golden age of Hollywood. And I loved Mank. And this is a film that especially, I feel like if you love film, this is something that's going to sit with you and just penetrate you to the core. And you're going to sit there and love every single moment of it. But it's something that is so engaging and enthralling in how it pulls the layers back and presents the story, the struggle of making this script come together. I think the audiences who are going to sit and appreciate this film are going to get so much out of this experience. But those are my thoughts on Mank. Let me know what you think and let's talk some movies. But thank you as always for tuning in and supporting your Wasteland Reviewer.